Hey everyone, today we have a quick tutorial on building your own news app. Whether you're building a standalone news app or want to implement news article to an existing app, um, this tutorial is for you. So quick overview is that here uh, we have the article title, um, a short snippet of the article itself and read more. So when you click read more on the container, it launches the article itself to the actual website that's published the article. Um, so you can see there's a range of 50 articles here for the user to select. And if the user wants to change news category, they can just press the drawer button and supposedly they want to read about technology. Um, we just click technology. And you can see here the API call is re-ran again and technology related news articles are being shown here. Um, so range of articles about Pixel Buds, iPhone 16, Apple, etc. So this will be a really great tutorial to get started on learning about API calls in addition to building your own news app using external sources. Before we get started, remember to comment, like, or subscribe for more content on Flutterflow. Your support is really appreciated and helps me build more content relevant to your needs. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we need is an external API that will bring us news. So a great website to get APIs is called rapidapi.com. Um, here, there are a range of APIs available from sports to AI machine learning, finances, and data. The API we'll be using is called the news Google API. Um, so this is an API that Google News has provided um, that we'll be using here. I've already subscribed to it, but what you need to do is just subscribe to it. Um, there is a free plan available for up to a limited amount of API calls. You can see test endpoint and it will bring back a set of results based on the latest. So you can see here, uh, Helena flooding strands, hundreds of North Carolina residents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is based on the latest, of course, it's entertainment, world, business, health, sports, science, kick technology. And of course, there's different support for different languages and regions. So if you want to focus on um, Asia news, you can also focus on by changing the API parameter. Um, you can put EN um, Asia, but basically you can get all the possibilities of languages and regions making this API call. Um, in this example, we're just going to go something basic. We're going to use an English um, language. In addition, we're going to focus our news on the US here just to simplify the API call a bit. During the tutorial, I'll show you how you may be able to use um, different news from around the world and different languages as well. Anyway, so let's configure this API endpoint. So we can easily see here, this is the endpoint you need and the headers we need to pass here, which is greatly provided by Rapid API already. So if we jump back to Floodflow and then go to the API calls tab and press add API call and add a, and let's call it get news here. And it's a get because you can see here, it's a um, get API call here. And I'm just gonna copy this full URL here quickly. This is getting the latest you can see here and the language is ENUS. I want to make our app a bit more dynamic so we're able to get the latest entertainment, world, etc. different type of news based on the user's requests. So you can see here now, let's press, um, I'm gonna add the two headers required. So these are the headers required as provided by Rapid API. So I'm just copy and paste this. Um, I'll, I'm gonna change the API key here later on when I finish this tutorial so no one can access this API key, even though I showed it. Um, so this is, and then because we are gonna use, um, allow the user to change a different type of news, I'm going to make this a variable by putting it into square brackets and let's call this news type. And then I'm going to add news type as a variable of type string and the default value, I'll just leave it as this for now. And then if I go, um, so for example, here, if you want to change a language from ENUS to other things that's available, uh, you can see what, what language, what other languages support it. You can see here, you can get, um, uh, Indonesian news by putting ID, ID, Deutschland news by putting D, E, D, E, 
things like that, right? But you know, I'm going to focus on English language, focus on the US. So I'm going to quickly add this API call and let's test this quickly. So I'm going to put latest here. You can see here, this is the API call URL preview. It looks exactly the same as the one being used here. And I'm going to press this API, test API call. And you can see here, this is the example that's been returned here. Um, all these information here are great. Um, but what we really want is, in essence, the items. Because this basically shows us, okay, this is the response um, of the items, i.e. from their perspective, items means all the news articles being responded. So I'm just going to add JSON path and put items and then press save. So if you really want to see uh, a cool app that helps you navigate the JSON path, it's called jsonpath.com. And I've just pasted all the, uh, the API response here. And you can see here you can navigate through it just by typing the JSON path up here. So you've got items, you can see here, this is what we just added the JSON path as in Flutterflow. And let's just say you want to select the first item which is the flooding news article, and then you press, maybe you only want to show the snippets. So you navigate to the snippet by pressing dot snippet. You can see here, this is the snippet of the news. The Southeast is grappling with widespread devastation after Helena made landfall Thursday as the strongest hurricane, etc., etc. So this is the snippet of the article where you can move to the title um, or the timestamp or news URL, etc., etc. Um, anyway, so that's how you can use jsonpath.com to help you understand and navigate and um, test different paths instead of using the testing environment on Flutterflow. Now that we have configured the API core, let's go build our front end. What I'm envisioning here is we're going to show a list of articles showing the title, an image, and a snippet of the article itself, and a button that says read more to go in and read the articles. Um, and we're going to show a, maybe a drawer that allows us or allows the user to navigate between different type of news here. So it could be latest news, entertainment, world, etc. Um, so how do we build that? So firstly, what I want to do here is add a background query. The query will be the API call that we've set up of get news. And we are going to use a page state here to store the type of news that we're getting. So I've created a page state called news type and the default value on initial is latest. That means when the page loads, we'll get the latest news. So when you go to API call and we go get news, set additional variables, um, news type as page state of oh, news type. So press okay. Now that we make configure the API call, let's add a column. The column will generate dynamic children based on the get news predefined path of items that we previously saved. So let's call this items list. Now, now that we've generated a column based on the re response of the API, let's add containers to show each article. I'm going to make a width of infinite, a height of blank because I, allow, I want the container to flex according to the article itself. Um, so the next piece we need to do is, as I said, I'm envisioning to show a column. Well, left-hand side will show some images and the right-hand side will show the text of the article. So I'm going to add a container and then within inside there's a row. I'll add some padding of 12 to make it more spacious when you're reading it. And then next, um, I want to add some padding to the container, to the column of 12 to space out the articles. So for the row itself, I'm going to add an image first. I'll add a small image of maybe 50 by 50. And then I'll add another column showing the text that we're talking about. So the first text will be a title. The second text will be the snippet. The third text will be um, maybe a read more button. So it'll be read more here. So let me align this, add some padding. So that's not too bad. And then we'll shrink this font a little, maybe add some padding here. So the first thing we're going to do is show the title. So if you recall by using JSON path, you can see here, you can access the title by going, selecting that items element, the 
that specific array. So for example, the first item dot title. You can see here, we can see the title here. So we can do the same here. So the column is already generating children, generating children based on the items here already. So what we need to do is pass in the title in order to access the title of each item. So this is the dynamic children being generated. So all we need to do here is click items list, JSON path dot title. Next, we'll do the same for the snippet. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and dot snippet. And then for the image, so you can see here on the left hand side, the inputs, we can go dot images. You can see images have two fields that we can access, thumbnail and thumbnail proxy. We're going to use thumbnail proxy because it allows us to access it via our, our app. So we're going to go to items list, JSON path will be dot images dot thumbnail proxy. So I'm just going to put this here, confirm. Now let's maybe add an action. When they press this article, it opens up the URL of the article. So you can see here, the news URL is provided here. Um, going through by using this field called a new, called a news URL. So news URL is this. So I'm going to add launch URL action. The variable we're setting it is based on the items list item, JSON path, dollar sign dot URL. So that's how we've configured it. Now that we've configured it, um, maybe let's make this text field here show what type of news is being shown right now. So what we can do here is we can do a, maybe I want to do a code expression to uppercase um, the news being shown. So it'll be the page state, news type. Uh, let's call this news type. And then I'm going to do uppercase of it. So to do the uppercase of it, all you're going to do here is um, the code expression is basically news type dot to uppercase. And then make sure it's output of string. And then you can see here, you just press check and confirm. And this will show basically the uppercase of the news type that we are showing. So it'll be whether it's entertainment, world, etc. Maybe I just shrink the font a little to 18. I'll make, I'll leave it as white. So next, what we want to do here is add that app drawer that we spoke about. The app drawer that allows us to, you know, it's quite common across mobile web apps where it shows app drawer here on the side, allows the user to select the type of news they want to um, read. So what you're going to do here is go to the canvas and press drawer, search for drawer. Um, you can see this gets shown and let's add some, let a column and maybe we'll just add some, uh, maybe a container here of infinite width and maybe the height will be 50, maybe a hundred just to make it spacious. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Maybe I'll make it 60, um, height and I will make this container to be clear. So, what you can do here is have a back end that basically generates these values. So when you make a column, you just query the back end um, to generate these values of latest, entertainment, world news, etc. But I'm just going to do this manually here, uh, quite tedious. Um, but you can see how it can be done. So I'll just align this to maybe the center. And I'll just call this latest. I'll just make it 18. And then I'll add another one. Where's the next one? It's called entertainment. So that's how it works. Um, and I'll just add some padding here on the column just to bring this down a little. Just add a padding of 60, let's just say. Maybe 80, uh, 100, let's just do that. Okay, so when the user clicks latest, I want to update the page state. Because when you update the page state, you can actually rerun, rerun the API call again. So let's just say I want to add an action of update page state. I'm going to update the news type here, set value as 
latest. And then secondly, what you want to do here is refresh the database requests of the home page itself. So we, we are refreshing the API core. So let's copy this action chain across each of these. Um, each of these containers. So the next one is entertainment. So that's how it will work. So what we can do here is um, maybe we'll add a button to show the drawer. So I'm just going to hide the drawer quickly. And then up top, maybe I'll just add a drawer itself. So we'll go to a widget. Actually, I'll add an icon here to show it's leading. And I'll just press the search for menu icon. I'll just make it white. And then on action, I want to show the drawer. Open drawer. Perfect. And then when we open the drawer, let's also add a, a icon to hide the drawer. So maybe I just put X up top here somewhere very quickly. Icon, I'll drag this up. And then maybe I just put this to the... Okay, this is a pretty bad design, but I'm trying to think of what looks good. Uh, maybe just add some padding of 16 on here, and 16 on here. Maybe 16 all over, and then I press change this icon to close. And then on when the user presses this, it hides the drawer. So drawer, I want to close drawer. So that's how it works. Um, let's hide this manually. So this is basically how the app will look. Actually, what I want to do here is expand this. Um, column so it allows the text to flow accordingly. Uh, let's quickly test this to see um, and whether it works fine. Okay, perfect. The app just loaded and you can see here we're seeing all the articles here with the title, the snippet and read more button and when you click read more it launches the URL of the article itself. Um, this is so let's we forgot to add the column to be scrollable here allowing the page to not cut off and be overflown. Um, you can see here we change, go open the drawer and press maybe, I want to read about business news. And then you can see here, we forgot to close the drawer when we pressed business news, but you can see here, the article just changed uh, from about floods to some business related news. So to quickly fix this action flow, maybe we should just do close Draw right here and add it to each of these container action flow. Now let's retest the app. Cool, now the app is loaded. You can see here on page load, it shows the latest news and we can scroll and see uh, a list of articles, I think around 50 articles. And if I go to change to maybe sport news this time, you can see here we have updated the list of news to be about sport, um, NFL, Chiefs, Falcon, Rapid, etc. All US focused. So we can see here, this app is perfectly working fine. And if we want to press read more, we press read more, it will launch the article that is being shown. So I hope this lesson helped you understand how you can use external API calls to get news articles for your app. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe for more content on Flutterflow.